What is up guys, Coach Joe, Garage De La Swole, and in this video we're gonna be talking about the three big mistakes that I see online coaches making, kind of things to be aware of and how you can avoid these mistakes if you are looking for a coach or if you currently have one. But before we get to it guys, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. We have over a thousand videos on this channel and I've been creating videos for over 10 years. Now the first thing I wanna talk about is why would you get an online coach? So the main reason why people get coaches is because they have kind of got started on their own and then maybe they've hit a plateau, right? And when they hit that plateau, they keep you know putting their, their head into the wall, banging it back and forth, wondering why am I not making progress? And in today's world, it's very easy because on social media, we have so many people who have coaching services, whether that's good or bad, uh, but they can help you progress in your journey. The other thing on top of that is say maybe you're doing great with your training journey, but you have something really specific that you don't have enough knowledge about or the person that you wanna contact as your coach has either been there, done that, and has these accolades and can offer you that guidance to get you to where you wanna be or maybe where they were at at some point based on their experience. I myself have been training since I was a teenager, but I do call in coaches that help me out when I'm dealing with preps or competitions or if there's something that I don't know enough about, I wanna utilize a coach because then I can get better myself, I can learn, and then I can pass it on to the clients that I serve. So I use coaches when it comes to strongman programming, nutrition, business, all that type of stuff, and I have learned a lot. Equally, I've also paid for coaching that didn't really hit the mark for what I was looking for, and that's kind of what we're talking about in this video, or things to be aware of when you do have an online coach, and this would be specific for training per se. A big red flag when it comes to mistakes that I see online coaches make is they have this my way or the highway attitude. So if you are working with a coach who basically has their training philosophy and they're not open to your needs, your goals, your wants, and they are just telling you exactly what to do, no ifs, ands, or buts, to me, like I said, that just kind of sets off a red flag. A coach is someone who obviously they have their skill or expertise in whatever subject matter, but they need to be able to work with you, okay? We all have different strengths, weaknesses, abilities, time constraints. There's so many variables, and as a coach, our main job is to gather information from the client, figure out what we can do and how we can best work with that client. So if you're trying to tell your, your, your coach that I can only train three days a week and I only have 60 minutes, and they're trying to get you to train five or six days a week for over an hour, okay? That's just setting up the relationship that there's already gonna be some sort of disagreement or turmoil, or you're just not getting the expectation that you had when working with a coach. As a coach, speaking from firsthand experience, my main goal is compliance with the client that I work with. So when we're starting out, I wanna make sure that when I'm giving them something, they're highly motivated and they can stick to the program. So if I have an athlete who's just starting and I am just overloading them with work, things to do, and just making them overwhelmed and they're not gonna be as compliant with that program, I have to look back at myself and saying, what am I doing wrong? So if you do have questions and you are asking them to your coach and they're shutting them down right away, they're just telling you, you gotta do this no matter what, no if, ands, or buts, blah, 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 then I would be a little bit skeptical on whether or not they're gonna put you in the best possible position to succeed. The second mistake that I see coaches making is they try to take on everybody with tons of different goals and different needs. And a lot of times those goals or needs are outside of their expertise. Now, yeah, it's great because you can say you have a ton of clients. However, if you're a strength coach and you're taking on clients that have endurance goals and you have no background in endurance training or you haven't done what you're trying to get your client or athlete to do, then I would probably take that client and put them in a better position with another coach. That can be a little bit awkward, but I actually do that a lot. When I have clients that come to me for endurance type goals or CrossFit or maybe weightlifting at this time, I say, hey, you know, I would love to help you, but that is not my realm of expertise and practice. And honestly, some of those things I'm just not as interested in. So I'd rather put you with somebody who's super passionate and super knowledgeable. Is there any way I can hook you up or send you, uh, you know, a, a link or an email to this coach? And then you can talk to them to better suit your needs and goals. A lot of times coaches do this simply because of money, right? They want to get as many clients as they can. They just want to keep ranking up that tab. And to me, that's not why you're in it for coaching, okay? You are in it to best serve the client. And you have to know 
as a coach, right, what is out of my realm of practice and be okay with the fact that, yeah, maybe I'll lose that client and that financial stability. However, down the road, they're gonna be in a much better position and they may even come back and thank you. And I'll be honest, guys, in the beginning, I made that mistake. I tried to take on as many people as possible and it wasn't in a malicious way or a financial reason. It was just the fact that I wanted to help as many people as I could. But then when I started getting these more in-depth questions and clients with specifics, on things that I realized I just didn't know, I then had to say, yo, gotta drop the ego. I gotta tell this person, I simply do not know this and I'm gonna put you in better hands to help you succeed. So if you find yourself being that coach, I know it's gonna be you know, your piece of humble pie, but just swallow that, okay? Put your ego in check and get that person into better hands so that they can truly succeed. Lastly, and this is something that I actually had with a coach that I had hired, is that you don't want your coach to consistently be a yes man. And what I mean by that is when you go and you're giving input or feedback to your coach, they're constantly saying, looks great, awesome job, don't need to change anything, keep crushing it, blah, 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 okay? Yes, as a coach, we do want to be a motivator, absolutely, to our client. We wanna hype them up, we wanna get them prepared and ready and just attack their goals with them. At the same time, they're hiring you for your expertise. So if they're sending you, maybe it's a technical analysis or nutrition or just updates on their training, it's your job to give them constructive uh, criticism so that they can stay on track, okay? If their technique isn't where it needs to be, you know, it's your job to tell them, hey, you know, that looks good, but here's where I'd make some adjustments. Or, you know what, hey, uh, I'm noticing we had a really bad week of nutrition or a bad week of training. This is what I would like to see moving forward. If you're constantly just always being that yes man as a coach, you're not really doing your job, okay? There's always a time and a place for it, but once again, these people are paying you. More often than not, it's a premium monthly fee or a package deal or something like that, and it's your job to make sure you're giving them the criticism that they need to succeed. Once again, at the same time, yes, your coach should not be an a-hole, for lack of better words, constantly degrading you, telling you that you're not good, your form sucks, you need to get better, this is garbage, etc. right? But we have to know our time and places as coaches to give our client the best value possible. And sometimes it is uncomfortable conversation. Sometimes it is a little bit of tough love, right? So you gotta find that balance. And if you do have a coach and they're constantly just telling you everything looks great all the time, obviously there are some anomalies where things are going great for a long period of time, but more often than not, there's always something little that can be worked on or fine-tuned, especially when it comes to the monetary exchange that you're giving with your coach. Now, I'm actually gonna give you guys a little bonus tip here, and this is probably more for coaches out there than athletes or clients of coaches, but it can go both ways, okay? If you've been working with a client or an athlete for a long time, I'm talking a year or so, Okay? Your job as a coach is to give them the path or the roadmap and the guidance they need to get to that goal. Your job is not to continually try to rank up the bill. And I used to see this when I worked at other gyms that all we were trying to do was just sell packages, sell programming, etc. And that's all it came down to. So when I look at coaching now, I'm trying to get that athlete or client to the goal or destination that they want. And along the way, give them all the tools that they are able to do it on their own after they are no longer being coached by me. Now, what I find with the clients and athletes that I work with, and I've worked with athletes for over a year, maybe even two years, and then we stop because I say, hey, as a coach, this is all the things that we've done. Here are all the tools that you have now. Do you feel comfortable and confident to now do this on your own? More often than not, they say yes, they go on their way, but I'm always going to be a resource and a tool that they could send me a message or an email, a call, text or whatever, and ask me questions. Now, if it gets to a point where maybe they have something specific that they need more programming or training on because they don't have that knowledge, I 100% am in their corner. And I do that personally. Where, for example, for most of the year, I understand how to program for myself. I understand the things I need to do for the goals that I have. But when I get close to a big show prep, for example, for Strongman, I hit up coaches that I've worked with in the past or I want them to come on board my coaching team to get me dialed in, get me focused, okay? Keep me out of my own head. So there's other reasons where you can utilize a coach for a period of time, do your own thing, and then say, you know what, hey, what, hey, so-and-so, I gotta have you back on my team. This is the goal that I have. Are you down to be you know, back on board? And if they're a coach and they're available, they're probably going to say yes and they're going to help you. So that's just a bonus tip. If you find 
that your coach is consistently trying to upsell you all the time and you feel like you have the knowledge that you do already, it's your job to say that. And on the other side, it's the coach's job to have that conversation of, do you feel comfortable continuing this journey without me? But hey, I'm here when you need me as support. I made this video just because I find it's difficult, especially when I go on social media, how we have people who maybe train for a couple months or they have really great genetics or maybe they've done some sort of transformation and then right away they qualify themselves as a coach and they're willing to take on clients. Now there's nothing wrong with helping people or having some sort of monetary exchange, but people need to know their limits, okay? Sometimes I see people who are totally out of their realm of expertise and practice offering coaching for whatever subject matter that's going to be. So just be skeptical because there are so many coaches out there. You really need to do your homework and due diligence to make sure that that's the right coach for you. And that's totally okay to ask them a lot of questions. And right off the bat, if they're getting defensive for you asking questions, right, I would kind of be a little bit worried about hiring that coach. That coach should be able to explain their entire system to you, what it's gonna look like, how it's gonna go. They should probably do some sort of consultation with you and then make sure that they're sticking to their guns and their word with what they said to you. And if not, that's probably where you gotta break up that relationship. And at the end of the day, when you're working with an athlete or you're working with a coach, it really is a relationship. And if you don't feel that way, there's not good communication, conversations, questions being asked, once again, I would be a little bit concerned with that coach. Now on the flip side, there are some amazing coaches out there who know a ton and their fee for whatever they charge is highly validated because of their accolades, the clients they work with, the things they've done for themselves. So you have to remember, yeah, maybe it is pricey, but that's an investment to yourself. And if you utilize that investment properly, you'll be able to continue on your journey and have amazing progress because of the things that you learned from that coach. I've had coaches my whole life. I've learned so much and there've been so many influential coaches that you know I've used that if I didn't have them, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So you have to just kind of look at both sides of the spectrum here and kind of figure out where you're at in your journey, what makes the most sense and progress from there. Now, one thing I do want to add to this video when it comes to the coaching client relationship is it is your job to communicate with your coach as well, okay? There've been times where I put out text message or emails just looking for check-ins or, or checkups on the client and I just get ghosted, okay? Now, yeah, that could be something I'm doing wrong. At the same time, you as the athlete need to be putting in what you wanna get out of it. So you need to be putting in the work, you need to be communicating. You also can't just be a yes man, oh, everything's going great, blah, 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 when maybe in reality it's not, we're not making the progress you want. We don't know sometimes as coaches. So it is a two-way street when it comes to communication, okay? So that's something that I've noticed or maybe I've had issues with in the past and I always try to better myself as a coach and the client as well needs to be receptive to the fact that you gotta be putting in the work, you have to be communicating on all fronts, good and bad, and that's really gonna help build that relationship that you can make with your coach and further the progress that you get while working with them. I also understand that coaching can be very expensive. Obviously, it can go from minimal to maximal, so utilize the resources you have. YouTube is a great resource. Social media is a great resource. If you're doing your homework and you're taking notes, you're trying and experimenting with things, and you can probably get really far on your own, okay? There's also things like programming templates. And typically when I have a client, I like to see where they're at. And sometimes I say to them, hey, I'd rather you run this template first. And if you're getting great results for a smaller cost, start there. After you've done that, or maybe your goals change, then come back to me and then we can talk about other levels or other coaching services that I can offer you. So on the topic of coaching guys, if you're looking for me to be your coach, okay, we have a ton of programming videos that are completely free. We also have a la carte programs available on the website. We also have a programming app that's a monthly subscription with 21 plus programs on there right now. So you can easily try that. If you are looking for more of a one-on-one -on -one experience, 24 seven communication, right? Custom programming week by week, day by day type of analysis type stuff. I do have a couple openings for online coaching. So if you are interested, please send me an email or a DM on Instagram and we'll kind of go through a whole survey. We're just gonna have a conversation, probably do a Zoom call, get you guys figured out and situated. And then if you wanna take the next steps from there, we can proceed and we can rock and roll. But like I said, there's so many options. Pick what works for your budget, 
where you're at in your training career, and then do the homework on the coach that you're looking for. You know, get your research, ask them questions, and then hopefully that's gonna help better answer if you wanna work with this person or not. So that's all I have, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe. I talked about all my coaching services. If you're interested, just send me a message and we'll get you squared away. We also have a Patreon, it's $10 a month, a ton of behind the scene content that I don't post on here or on Instagram doing training, we're going over things that have to deal with your self-development, right, mental health, and any like cool things that I think are valuable, I throw on that Patreon. But you made it all the way this far, I appreciate you guys, stay a lean, mean health strength machine, and I'll catch up with you next time, peace.